Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's talk about the case where the energy of the particle is less than the potential of the step. So in this case, we have a particle with energy E. It comes upon a step. The potential of the step is V sub naught, which is larger. And so what happens next? Well, the particle will get reflected, but part of the particles will actually penetrate into the potential step. The question is, how far will that penetration be? And we can define that exponential decaying function here by the wave function in that region, region 2, the magnitude of it squared. So we need to find out what the magnitude of that wave function squared is equal to, and that will give us an equation describing the penetration. And we'll figure out how far into that step the penetration will be before it's essentially zero. So how do we do that? Well, first, here's our wave function in region 2. The constant c in a previous video was defined in terms of the constant a, which is the portion of the wave function in region 1 that represents the particles moving to the right. So we have c in terms of a relative to k1 and k2, where k1 is defined. Let's see here, let me write that down somewhere. k1 is equal to the square root of 2 times the mass times the energy of the particle divided by h bar. k2 is equal to that equation right up there. So now what we need to do is we need to find out what the value of the magnitude of c squared will be because essentially we're going to need to take the wave function and find the magnitude and square it. And so we need to go ahead and find that value right here. Essentially this is what we're trying to look for. So we need c squared. So we're going to take the magnitude of c and square it. So it's going to be the magnitude of this equation right here and square it, assuming that a is equal to 1. So just let's make a equal to 1. We replace what k1 and k2 are equal to in terms of these expressions right there. And right away we realize that the h bars cancel out and that the two m's cancel out everywhere, which ends up with an equation like this. Now, if we replace the energy of the particle with what it's equal to, and in this particular example, we let the potential step have a potential of 2 electron volts and the energy of the particle be 10% of that, which is 0.2 electron volts. So now we're going to replace each e by 0.1 times the magnitude of the potential step. So we do it here, here, and here. And then we subtract from it here, actually the potential of the step, 0.1 minus 1 times V sub naught. And then again, we realize that we can cancel out a V sub naught everywhere, which means our equation turns into this. And then because we have the square root of a negative number, we can turn that into a complex number. And then when we take the magnitude of that, we need to take the magnitude of the complex number. And the magnitude of a complex number is the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So we square this component, we square this component, we add them together, we take the square root, that will give us a 1. And then if we square the numerator, we get 4 times the square of this, which is 0.1. 4 times 0.1 is 0.4 divided by 1. Of course, we get 0.4, which means that the magnitude of c squared is equal to 0.4. Now that goes in our equation there. Now the next thing we need to do is find a value for ik2x so that we come up with the wave function proportionally. Now k2 is an imaginary number because e minus v is going to be less than 1. It's going to be a negative number. So we need to replace it by some other number. So what can we do here? Let's say that um, the square root of 2m times e minus v sub naught, realizing that this is a negative number, right? And of course, this is divided by h bar. Well, that's going to be equal to the square root of negative 2m times, now we're going to turn these around, v sub naught minus e over h bar. And so this can now be replaced by taking this off and multiply times i. So this is equal to the square root of 2m times v sub naught minus e times i over h bar. All right, so what we're going to do next now is we're going to dig this quantity right here and place it by another constant, let's call it alpha. So we're going to call this alpha times i. And so alpha times i is going to be equal to this quantity, which is equal to k2. So in other words, we could say that uh, 
alpha times i is equal to k2. And if we divide both sides by i, then we can say that alpha is equal to k2 divided by i. Okay, now if I multiply the top and the bottom by i, so multiply this by i and divide this by i, then I can say that this is equal to i times k2 divided by i times i is i squared, which is a minus 1. And then I can look up here and see that I can now take my wave function in region 2 and call it c times e, and instead of i k 2 x, I can say i k 2, and then if I bring the minus 1 over here, I can replace that by a minus alpha. So I'm going to write this as a minus alpha times x. And now I have a new equation where I have a real exponent and where alpha is defined to be this quantity right here. So this right here is alpha. And now we have an equation that I can go ahead and use to find the decay function here, the penetration depth into that step. Next, we're going to multiply both sides, or not multiply both sides, but square both sides. So now we can say that the magnitude of that squared is equal to the, the right side squared, which is the magnitude of c squared times e to the minus 2 alpha x, because when I square an exponent, I just multiply the exponent by 2. And this is the finest point 0.4, so now we can say that our wave function squared is equal to 0 0.4 times e to the minus 2 alpha x, like this, where now we still need to define alpha, because alpha is equal to this quantity right here, and assuming that this is an electron with a known mass and a known energy, let's go ahead and see what alpha would be equal to in this case. So what we can do here is say that alpha is equal to the square root of 2 times the mass, times v sub naught minus e, remember that v sub naught is bigger than e, divided by h bar. So this would be equal to the square root of 2 times the mass, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, times the difference in the energy, so v sub naught is 2 electron volts minus 0.2 electron volts, so that's a different energy, and then we should convert that into joules, which means it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per electron volt, like this. And then we divide the whole thing by h bar, which is h, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34, all divided by 2 pi. All right, let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. So that gives us 2 times 9.11 e to the 31 minus, times 1.8 electron volts, times 1.6 e to the 19 minus, which is a conversion to joules, take the square root of that, multiply times 2 and times pi, and divide it by 6.626 e to the 34 minus equals, and that gives us 6.87 times 10 to the ninth. So here we have a value for alpha. Alpha is equal to 6. Point but I get 87, 87 times 10 to the 9th, and the units, since we're multiplying this times x, which is distance, is going to be 1 over meters. So here we have the value for alpha, which, if we now plug it into our equation here, we can say that the magnitude of the wave function squared, which will give us a something not quite a probability, but proportional to the probability of where the particle will be, how far the particle will go in, and so there will be 0 0.4 times e to the minus 2 times 6.87 times 10 to the minus, oh, not minus 9, this is plus 9, uh, 1 over meters times x, and this will now give us an equation with the value for alpha, the constant, and let me just get rid of 1 over meters, that just makes it kind of messy. We understand it's 1 over meters times x, and that will then give us a way to calculate how far the particle will go into that, into that potential uh, barrier. Well, it's an infinite barrier, so we'll call it a potential step. And uh, we'll do that in the next video. We'll calculate some values for various values of x to see what the probability will be that the particle will be there, and when essentially the probability will go to zero. And that's how it's done.